Hello there, Capricorn. Welcome to your July forecast. It's always great to see you. This month in particular, however, because what I'm doing for each and every sign is identifying a breakthrough moment. I'll be doing that for you as I look somewhere between your channeled message and your catalyst, and there may be some additional information that comes through as we do the main part of the reading. So I hope you look forward to it. I know I am. And uh, before I get started here, I would like to simply give you a quick overview of how everything works, starting with what you can use this for. So of course, you can always use this for your sun, your rising, as well as your moon sign. And if there's someone in your life that you care about, you can also watch it on their behalf. If you don't happen to know your sun rising and moon signs, then just stick with the sign that you were born under and you'll get all the information you need just by doing that. If you are a returning viewer, I would like to say thank you so much, not only for showing up and supporting me, but more importantly for doing the work on yourself. You're the reason that I show up every month, so thank you. For all of my brand new viewers, I'd like to also extend a warm welcome and give you a quick introduction. My name is Nicholas Ashbaugh. And here's how I organize the reading each and every month. I like to start each and every reading off with what I call a channeled message. And this is really just when I access raw intuition alone. And I enjoy that part quite a bit, and I think you will too. After that, I expand the forecast to look at a Celtic cross. And that's where we examine all the highs and lows for the month. And after that, I expand the forecast to look at health, wealth, love, and destiny. If you like what you see here, I encourage you to stick around until the very end. In addition to me giving a quick summary of everything that we talked about and also a closing word, I'll let you know how you can give back if you'd like to. This includes things like liking and subscribing or joining me on social media, booking an appointment if you'd like, or giving a contribution. Again, more information about that at the end. I know you're very much interested in what's coming through right here, right now for this month. So let's get straight into your channeled information. As I selected a deck of cards for your sign this month and began to meditate, what I saw was a kind of a vision of someone running and running and running, but not getting anywhere. <laughs> and what I wrote down in my automatic writing was, don't rush, be present. And when you think about it, it's a really normal human emotion to just want to rush through things. Uh, because sometimes we just don't want to deal with what's going on right in the moment. Um, when you're a student, for instance, you're constantly thinking of the next grade, or when you're in college, it's all about graduation, and you think, as soon as I get that diploma, everything's going to be easier. And then you get out in the real world, and you realize, well, actually, there's a lot of other things that I didn't think about, and you kind of wax poetic about school and think it would have been nice to maybe just enjoy that. You're going to go through that in every stage of your life. I'm sure you felt that. We're always rushing to get to the next thing. If I can get this promotion, if I can meet this person, if I can have th this many children, if I can you know, pay for this mortgage, there's always tomorrow and there's always the next thing. And what's going on right now is everything that matters. So I want you today uh, to think about some stuff that you're really pleased with. Like if you look back at all that you have accomplished rather than what you need to do, um, really be grateful for the strides that you have taken. Also look at how hard you are working. Even if you haven't accomplished the goal yet, it's the work that you're putting in right now that matters. It's the people around you. Um, you know, your friends, your lovers, your family, all of these people that one day you'll look back and think, gosh, I wish I really enjoyed that moment just a little bit more. Something interesting happens to us after we are born and kind of get conditioned into what's expected of us in this life. We lose track of the whole purpose we came here, which was to evolve as a soul. It wasn't necessarily to get fame, to get success, to meet someone. All of these things are they're extensions of our experience on this planet, but who we live with, what our last name is, how much we make, all of these things, they don't actually matter unless they're teaching us something that we wanted to learn as a soul. So I'd like you to meditate a little bit this month and really tap into why am I here? What is my soul purpose, S-O-U-L, not S-O-L-E, and am I tracking to that? And am I also honoring, again, if you are good, honor the work that you've done on your soul and help some people around you as well, because service is part of that. So this will take you out of that need to sort of be constantly running and constantly getting to the next thing. I'm all for goal oriented work. Um, my rising sign is Capricorn, actually. So I do understand in a very personal way some of what's coming through for you, even though it's not my, my sun sign. I will say this. Um, all of the things that makes your sign amazing, this ability to really be grounded, practical, good in business. Um, this month, I want you to 
sort of release it a little bit and focus more on feeling things out, um, taking it taking it easy, not worrying so much about accomplishments. And what's going to naturally happen is when you get this sense of ease, you're actually going to, through the law of attraction and being a little bit detached from what it is you're trying to create, good things are going to start to rush in towards you. But sometimes you have to just be still. And I also want you to just observe what's going on around you. Uh, this is going to make you happier in the end. Be and it's also, if there's something that you're not happy with, it's going to make you aware of where the work needs to be done. Because we can sometimes, doesn't matter what sign you are uh, and where it falls in your chart, we're all guilty of this. Sometimes we can um, put up a lot of distraction around us so that we don't have to deal with things. So this month I'm challenging your sign in particular to be quiet and to be still and to really feel what it's like to be where you are right here, right now, okay? This is a perfect segue into looking at the Celtic cross. So at this point, I'd just like to remind you that I'm going to um, remain quiet myself as I pull the cards and afterwards, I'll look at each and every card with you and relate it not only to this message, but to everything else that's going to come through for you this month. So you have a really cool uh, aquatic animal here for your catalyst card. Quick reminder that the catalyst is what connects everything. It's how you can actually be more successful during the given month. Just like um, in science, a catalyst can either speed things up or slow them down. For you, when I'm looking at a stingray, I remembered back to um, biology class that this is a very unusual animal. Now, I'm not a marine biologist, but I remember some facts. One is that they don't have a traditional spine. I think they're mostly cartilage. And the other thing is that the way they hunt, it's not so much with their eyes or with like tasting things. It's actually these weird sensors that are on the bottom of them. So in some ways, this is a very psychic animal because it's using an atypical sense to figure out what's going on around it. And it's very flexible. And those are the two messages I'd like to focus on for you. This month, if you're thrown any sort of curveballs, Try to be like the stingray and kind of move with it, go with the flow, be flexible, and be open to what's going on. If you combine that flexibility with what we talked about earlier, the stillness, the tuning in, that's what's going to open up your ESP, your third eye, the equivalent of what they have on their sort of uh, the underside of them where they can sense out where to find food. For you, it's not going to be that. It's going to be, is this situation right for me? Is what you told me the truth or is there something more contextually that I need to know? Your ESP will be off the charts this month if you practice those two things. All right, let's go ahead now and take a look at the middle card here. Your central card is the Nine of Wands. And what I like about this is it's a card of survival. No matter what happens this month, you have basically done most of the work to get where you're at and you can handle anything that comes your way. This is a card of fighting and surviving and if you look closely, you know, you, you'll always notice the bandage on the Nine of Wands. And that is sort of like a battle scar and it's showing that, hey, I really fought for this and I deserve this. Uh, now the thing that I want to remind you is sometimes with the Nine of Wands there can be an impatience for things to progress to the next step. And that's what we talked about earlier and I think that's why this is at the center of your spread. You can't rush things, not this month. Um, it's okay to wait, and it's coming anyway because this is on its way to the 10, and the 10 is movement. Usually you see someone moving towards a new destination. It can show travel and sometimes even graduation like we were talking about. So trust that the work that you've done has set you up for success, and let's see what's crossing that. We have the Queen of Cups here, and the first thing that I would normally talk about is like sensitivity, intuition, creativity, but I actually got the word generosity in my head when I saw this. 
And I think that has to do with kindness and taking care of other people. There was a very nurturing energy that came through, one that I would normally associate with Queen of Pentacles. So you may encounter a really beautiful water sign coming into your life this month, or perhaps you're just getting in touch with that sensitive side of yourself, and there's a desire to help, to do some sort of service, I talked about that earlier, or again, maybe you want to receive a little bit of kindness and love yourself. So maybe this is a month where you decide to book an appointment at a spa or um, just spend some time with a friend and enjoy, relax. The heart space again wants to open. Kindness, generosity, peace. That's what I got when I saw the Queen of Cups, which is beautiful actually. Um, when we look in the deep past, I love that we were talking about the soul energy earlier because to me the star is one of the I think the closest cards in the major arcana to the soul as you can get because you'll notice typically the, the card shows a person that is not wearing any clothes that shows divinity and that also shows transparency and of course the star for me is a, a direct connection to something brighter higher your higher self to God etc and when I see the soul card in the past that tells me that many of you already do have an idea of what your true path is and that for some of you, you were on that path. Um, when I'm looking at some of the other cards, it looks like that might have gotten distracted or you might have kind of veered off of that. So today, what we're gonna focus on is how to get you back there, how to really help you integrate with your um, the purpose that you have on this planet, your sole purpose. All right, let's look now at the recent past and some of the other cards around this. In the recent past, we have the Two of Cups in reverse, and this is showing me that if you haven't already sorted out some of your relationship problems uh, or challenges, this is the month to do it. At the very beginning of the month, particularly the first week, some of this could spill over. I like that this illustration shows two people head to head connecting at the third eye basically. And this tells me that a lot of what you could do for healing this month could be nonverbal. It could be a gesture of kindness and we saw that Queen of Cups and I got generosity when I saw it. So I think for some of you, it could be some sort of an act where you give something to someone. It could be time, it could be service, it could be some sort of a belonging, um, and without asking and without expecting anything. This would be just out of the kindness of your heart and really something that you know would make a difference in that person's life. And if there is some sort of an imbalance, if there is some sort of healing to be done, this could be uh, a step in the right direction and something that clears the pathway between the two of you in your heart space. So I like that. And I think that this is something that you could do rather easily because sometimes, it, isn't it weird how the communication, just saying, I'm sorry, I love you, uh, we need to talk, all three of those things seem to cause differing um, emotional stress <laughs> depending on the situation. So sometimes just expressing what you think, what you feel, it speaks volumes and it's so much more powerful than words. One of the interesting things that I talked about in my intuitive development videos is whenever I've connected with ascended beings and ascended masters, usually they don't use language. A lot of times they will talk to me in, it's almost like you're watching a film strip and you just see images. And then sometimes I just know things or I feel things. I'll feel like the feeling of love, unconditional love. I'll see something and I understand how it connects. So beings, in the etheric realm already know that language is dense. For some reason on this planet, we haven't started using telepathy as much as we could or just opening to empathy as much as we could. So the next best thing for many of us is that exchange of an action or a nonverbal cue, and it'll be really powerful. So if you feel it, mind, body, spirit, and then you do it, it'll be just like what I was talking about with my experiences with etheric beings where uh, people will understand and it'll be beautiful. So that's my advice with that. There's a really interesting connection between the Queen of Cups and Two of Cups. Generosity and a nonverbal um, expression of whatever it is you're trying to do to affect healing or love. Because this can also show a fear of being rejected, of like unrequited love. And so if you demonstrate it, you'll be able to pick up if that is in fact um, sort of a compatible love. All right, looking at your crowning card, it's interesting. We have the uh, the Page of Wands, and I normally think of wands as a more sort of, um, you know, germination state where you're thinking of an idea. You might be starting to 
even convey it non-verbally, but I don't always think of it as speaking. This particular one is showing that you're actually using your voice, but I still think the one thing that's important here is to listen more than speaking because the card is reversed. And for me, whenever we have, it really doesn't matter if it's a page, queen, king, etc. Um, when the, the wands card is reversed, it usually shows that uh, one, there's more than one way to do something. Two, you're going to benefit from thinking of the alternatives and listening to it. And three, um, you may need to receive some criticism or you'll benefit from hearing other points of view so that eventually you can develop your idea further. So you're going to be better off with the team energy that wants to come through. Okay. Um, because it's a page, it's about the delivery and also the receipt of information. And so one thing that you're going to want to check this month is to make sure that you're on the same page. So whether it's spoken or whether it's something that's visual or nonverbal, as we talked about, just make sure at the end of the day, particularly in items of business, for instance, that you're both on the same page and there isn't something that has been misconstrued. As we look at the future, near future to be specific, we have the Six of Wands, one of my favorite cards. It's about community, it's about public acclaim, it's about acceptance. Um, by and large, it's a really good card as you can see here. It's usually showing something that is um, e equivalent to victory and success. The reversal of this card is a little bit of a warning in one area of your life, and that would be that whatever you're trying to do right now, do it because it feels right to you not because you want acceptance or approval or acclaim from others. True success happens because you are being authentic and because the delivery of whatever it is you're creating, whether it's business related, love related, or again, some sort of bigger work on the planet, it's just because it's the right thing to do. Um, so don't edit yourself, don't hold back, don't worry about what others are thinking. I feel like you know exactly what path to take ignore uh, trying to create something for that audience. So for my creative friends out there that are Capricorns, if you are doing some sort of a, you know, a film or writing something or creating some work of art, stay true to the vision. All right, let's move along now to the ego. We have Temperance reversed here. And Temperance is normally a great card for just being kind of even, not worrying about extremes. The reverse is saying that this month you might need to try something that makes you feel uncomfortable. Remember the stingray message. Flexibility is your friend. You're going to be able to sort of sniff things out using your intuition, just like that animal can. So it's okay to try something new, and that's what we see in the environment, the fool. This is taking a trip, taking a risk, trying something different. It could also show um, a really playful energy that's entering your life, whether it's a child, a friend, etc. The fool is going to bring you into new horizons. In fact, as we look in opportunity, uh, we have the lovers. And I was joking with another sign this month that you guys bug me sometimes to talk more about love. When it comes through, I mention it. This is a good month for love, but guess what? You are going to have to slow down and, as we saw here, take a chance in order for this love to come through. So uh, I like this and I have to highlight that I'm very excited for those of you out there that will meet someone because we have the star card in the deep past. This could be a reunion of sorts. Whether it's a deep friendship, a really cool business partnership, or a lover coming into your life, and yes, it could be a lover. Um, what we're seeing with the star card is this would be of a deep connection. Um, it would feel like you were meeting a really good friend. And, uh, and I am totally embrace and encourage you to go down that path if it makes sense, okay? There is a little bit of healing to be done. I'm, I'm pleased with everything that I see here, but the outcome is something that we have to talk a little bit about. We have the Ten of Swords in reverse. Uh, I like that it's reversed. I don't love that it's in the outcome, but I'm going to tell you how you can deal with it because I'm all about um, helping you understand how to mute certain cards or how to deal with certain energies. I never work with fear-based information. Um, Ten of Swords, what causes it? It usually comes because you are kind of working yourself too hard. So if you listen to my initial channeled message of not rushing and being present, that alone can probably avoid the Ten of Swords. What else can cause the Ten of Swords? crossed wires in miscommunication. Listen more than you speak. That can avoid the Ten of Swords. Uh, what else can cause that? 
Well, sometimes it's because you have been sort of like driving yourself too hard and not listening to your body. And for those of you that might, you know, have a chronic illness or maybe there was something that you've recovered from, but it's, it's very susceptible to stress, you want to be careful. Your nine of wands here at the center shows that past injury or that susceptibility. So this month, part of the reason that you have to be kind to yourself, I mentioned kind of getting a massage, going for a spa day, etc., is so that you can avoid this and ease this. I see your Ten of Swords as mutable, avoidable, and manageable. It's also in a reverse state, so one other piece of this is that ultimately this means an end to sadness or suffering. So if there was something in your life where I mentioned that there was a chance for a um, reconciliation or a healing of a relationship, we have the Two of Cups right here. Um, we uh, possibly have either, for some of you it's two relationships, for some of you it could be coming back to someone that you've broken up with. So for those of you where it's a healing, this could be an ex-spouse, a friendship where you become sort of estranged, it could even be a family member where you've fallen out. You finally have found a way to stop arguing. And for some of you it may be giving them something that they wanted, whether it is um, a physical belonging, the space that they've asked for, maybe it's money, whatever it is, that exchange that I talked about earlier will create a healing and it will stop this sort of tension. For the rest of you, the fact that you meet someone new creates a healing within your heart space and allows you to move on. So the Ten of Swords is there, but there are a lot of connotations to it. It's reversed, which means it's avoidable, and it also denotes healing. And you have a lot of really good cards like the Two of Cups, the Lovers, and the Star, which show me that your soul is getting you onto a better path. There may be one thing this month that is a little bit difficult to deal with, but it seems to be more of an echo of something that you've seen before, and it's also not going to be as difficult to deal with this month. Being present, being kind, being sort of uh, not wanting to kind of rush through this, that's the key to success. That's the key to dismissing this and graduating, if you will, okay? Um, by the way, if you haven't taken a trip, do something this month because we have the full card in the environment. Really good for just taking a day trip, walking around, just getting out in nature. All of this is going to help heal you as well. One last note before we move on to your health card. I see a really interesting contrast between the Stingray, flexible, and the Ten of Swords showing issues with being inflexible. And this isn't just about a spiritual or a mental thing. For some of you, you'll want to work with a health professional or talk to someone if you're having problems kind of stretching or holding your posture. And um, ask your doctor if something like yoga could help you or how you can stretch or sit better. Maybe there's an ergonomic adjustment that can be done where you're working. Pay attention now. The, the last thing that I'm seeing with that is if you're feeling some weird um, aches and pains in your body, talking to a professional now can avoid a more serious problem in the long run. Let's move along to your health message. This is your mind, your body, and your spirit, not just your physical energy. So uh, we'll give the cards a shuffle and see what the message is for you this month. Right, what a powerful card to come through in health. I'm going to read it to you. It says, Earth Angel, you are a light worker who has come to Earth to teach about love. And what is your primary thing that's coming through here? I keep seeing the lovers, the Two of Cups, and I saw for many of you a soul reunion with someone that you care about. Just a reminder again, these don't, they can be romantic, but they don't have to be romantic connections. For me, for instance, I'll pull the camera down. That little guy down there, that's one of my soulmates. Um, he's with me. He listens to all of this stuff. He really came to this planet to open up my heart space and to show me how to love better than I did before. And he succeeded at that. So a pet can be a soulmate. Uh, a friend can be a, a soulmate. Your parent can be your soulmate. And yes, a lover can be a soulmate. I just want to expand the definition because so often people think that it's only a physical or a sexual thing. It can be a really deep friendship. So part of this experience right here right now is for you to open up your heart and to not only learn about love but also teach it and so it's going to be a combination of the two things this month someone's coming in to teach you a lesson it could be a message of forgiveness 
It could also be a reunion and a deepening of um, a love that already existed. Whatever it is, I really think this month you need to make some time for uh, having fun, engaging with other people, at the very least a smaller sort of gathering with the Two of Cups. Uh, with the Six of Wands, there may be some social things that are coming on your calendar that you can't say no to. It could be a work engagement, it could also be just deciding, yeah, I have to go to that wedding, I have to go to that graduation party or that birthday party. By the way, doing that could inter introduce you or help you find this uh, lover that I see here or this good friend or this soul partner. So anyway, some really great stuff coming through for love. The main thing here is that if there is anything like an argument, a vendetta, anger, sadness, whatever, an estrangement, this is the month to heal that connection. And it could just simply be being kind to yourself or looking back at your family and maybe there's something from the past that you can heal a little bit, then go ahead and do that because when I look in the environment, we have the fool, which is your inner child. So somehow this month, take care of your heart, take care of love and forgiveness. And by doing that, you're gonna call in higher partners and potentially this soul partner, this soulmate that I was talking about. All right, what a beautiful uh, mind, body, and spirit message for you, by the way. Let's go ahead now and expand it to look at wealth and see what's coming through for career, for opportunities, also looking a little bit at self-worth. So in your wealth area, we have in the world, not of the world. And this is really encouraging you to try things outside of your comfort zone. Um, by the way, just the fact that it has world in it also, I connect it with the world card, which is moving on, moving up, expansion, connecting to higher purpose. But also for some of you, this could mean publishing, broadcasting, or sharing something. And part of that message is spirituality, because that's the, basically the core of this card. And don't be afraid to show your creative and your spiritual side this month because we've got the creativity of the Queen of Cups, the generosity of that card, um, the flexibility of the Stingray. This is a very aquatic card as well, which is saying that you don't have to just be one thing or another. You can be practical and spiritual. Um, you can be assertive and kind. Uh, so this month, break down those barriers when it comes to expectations in career and work and your opportunities are gonna open up because of what differentiates yourself. And this goes back to what I was kind of talking about earlier. It's not just creative people that need to take heed of the Six of Wands in reverse. This is for all types of you know people that are working out there right now. With the Six of Wands, this is just saying that do the best work that you need to do. Don't worry about keeping up with coworkers, um, competing with old high school friends, um, trying to Again, make some sort of a reputation here. At the end of our days, I've been mentioning this a lot to different signs. What happens is, you know, we see our life through the lens of other people, and we also see it with the help of our guides. Essentially, we have a communion with God, but you know, we are God, God is us, we see everything and we experience the connection and we judge ourselves. That's what I'm kind of getting to. So it's not necessarily we are judged, we judge our progress. So play that role right now. Don't wait for your life review. Do it now. Make the corrections now so that when you get up there with the angels and your guides, you'll be going, woohoo, <laughs> we did it. it. You know, this was a good thing. That's what I want you to do. I don't want you going up there thinking, oh, I could have done better. That's why you're showing up here every month. Be different, be bold. Take a look at your life right now. If you like it, good. If you don't, change it. And don't be afraid to really expand and do different things. That's what you're here for. You're supposed to be the star, okay? We just looked at health, then we looked at wealth. Now we're gonna look at love and see what's coming through for these beautiful relationship cards that I saw earlier. All right, this is an area of opportunity. We have a card here that symbolizes anger and rage, and I think that this one connects with the Ten of Swords that we saw earlier. And this also can benefit from what, what I was mentioning here with uh, respect to the Page of Wands. Trying to be an active listener this month and 
maybe just letting someone express their anger or their side of the story without interrupting, without having to prove you're right or they're right or who's wrong, it really doesn't matter. And when all else fails, since we have the environment card showing someone walking, uh, if someone is trying to kind of push your buttons and get you to really kind of go crazy in an argument, walk away. Um, it's not avoiding it, but, but I think what you need to do is say, we need time, we need space, this isn't the right time, and cool down, because the Ten of Swords can show some sort of a, a disagreement where words, once spilled, can't be unsaid, can't be kind of mopped up. Um, that's why you see a lot of carnage in that card. So really be careful before you say something that you may regret. This is not the month to do that. This is the month to embrace the energy of the star, of the Queen of Cups, and of the lovers, okay? That doesn't mean that you can't fight. Good relationships involve disagreements that you can work through, but you don't wanna say words that are hurtful. You have to find the right time, the right space to do it, and it may require a, a sort of a delay and just say, let's talk tomorrow when we're both in a better space. Because when I look in the opportunity space, it is the lovers, so these other things are things that could go wrong, but not necessarily what will. So if you play your cards right, no pun intended, um, you're gonna be okay, all right? Let's go ahead now and focus on your final card for today. This is the Destiny card. This gives you a chance to sort of do a gut check, see if everything is gelling for you if you're, and if you're happy with the path that you're on. It may also reveal something that we haven't talked about today. So let's uh, give it a shuffle and see what the message is for you. So your angels and guides want you to pay attention to your body, something that we saw much earlier here with the Ten of Swords. And again, I think this goes back to, are you flexible? Are there issues with joints, with bones, uh, and also just with posture? You really want to pay attention to that. This is a good month for those of you that are in really good health to just be focusing on continuing that fitness routine. It's going to help you in the long run. It will help you avoid this outcome years and years later. And for those of you that are struggling, this might be a, a chance for you to talk to like a physical therapist or a massage therapist because we're specifically looking at the, mus the muscles here, not so much the bones. But I think it's a combination of the two. So this is a month to make sure that your body feels good, it feels right. Go and get a physical if you haven't in a while. Um, go talk to a professional by all means. It's a good month to just practice good self-care. So that brings everything to a close. I'm gonna pull the camera down here and do a nice review of everything that we talked about and then I'll leave you with a closing word. The first message was to be still, not to try to rush, not to push fast forward, to really understand that you are exactly where you need to be and that all the lessons that you've called in were for your benefit. So be present and try to absorb what is coming through this month. Flexibility and intuition, that's really what the stingray was conveying. You've got both of those attributes use them to your advantage, and really focus on being able to kind of move through situations, not feeling like you're rigid. The Nine of Wands at the center, you've worked hard to get where you're at. Some of you actually have come through a really difficult history, and you may not let other people know that, but I see that here with uh, the battle scars here. And that could just be a figurative battle scar, but that hurts just as much if it's emotional. Just wear that with a like a badge of courage. You've done a great job to get where you're at, this month, we want to focus on kindness, on sensitivity, on generosity. The, the Queen of Cups is coming through to heal you. And it's really you connecting with your own inner Queen of Cups, taking it easy and uh, really being as kind as possible to yourself. Reconnecting with your soul purpose. That's something we've hit on many times today, and I really want to spotlight that again. The star is telling me that you already know what you need to do. This month is a chance for you to realign with that star energy. The Two of Cups in reverse. There's a chance for forgiveness this month. Embrace it, because once you allow for that forgiveness to happen, you could either have a reconciliation or a higher partnership that takes its place, and that's a beautiful thing. Listen more than you speak, and remember also this month that an act of kindness can be uh, even more impactful than saying something to someone. The Six of Wands in reverse. Try not to focus too much on others' wishes or uh, judgments. What's important is how do you feel about everything? This is external. This isn't the work that you came to do on the planet. This is just basically the environment and it's not important. 
looking here at your ego, you're going to have to step outside of your comfort zone. For many of you, this could be in work. Um, so take that risk, and we see the fool right here above it in the environment. Also, the risk could be saying I'm sorry or showing you're sorry, possibly saying I love you or showing the love. As we look at opportunities, we see love coming in. Healing is possible. It's really where your soul wants to go this month. Take time to have fun with people. The one thing that is good about the Six of Wands is that there will be invitations, there will be parties, there will be events. Through that, you could meet someone. It's important to get out. Take care of your body. We saw messages about how flexible you are, um, what might be going on with your muscles or your bones. Uh, you're going to really need to work with a professional for that, but it came up three times. So if you haven't had a physical in a long time, this is a good month to do that. In your health card, it's more of a spiritual message here, reminding you that you're a light worker, you came to heal, and you came to teach and learn about love. And we got a lot of love this month for you, so embrace that. Try to work through anger, um, frustration, or any of these Image, uh, images from the past that might be coming through that are triggering you. Finally, realize that you are stronger than you may give yourself credit for, and this month you're going to have what it takes to get to the next level, uh, both spiritually and also in your relationships. So this brings your monthly reading to a close. I hope that it gave you what you needed. I felt that this was one of the most powerful readings that I did for any sign this month, actually. There was a lot of really deep soul energy that came through, a lot of healing energy too, and um, some really deep spiritual connections from the past as well. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing how this resonates with some of you and what work you're able to do and what healing you're able to create this month. If you ever feel like you wanna talk a little bit more about something that we covered here this month or any month, um, you can do that by reaching out to me. If you click on the first card in the video or the first link below, that'll take you to my booking site where you can check out my rates and my availability. And if that feels good and it's something that you wanna do, then I'm here and I'm happy to talk to you. The second card in the second link below the video is just a way for you to give back if you like what you see here. As you can tell, I take this very seriously. I give a lot of my time and energy. I show up every month and I never put out a video unless I feel like it's top notch. So um, if you appreciate the value of what I do here, which is just like a personal reading, please consider doing a, either a one-time contribution or a continuing one. For anyone who's done this previously, I just wanna say thank you so much. Today's video is a direct result of your assistance, and if you wanna help with the next round, feel free to do so, and in advance, I'd like to say thank you. If you would like to give back in a different way, and one that really makes a difference to me, you can join me on social media. The third card and the third link will take you to my website where you can sign up for uh, all of my social media accounts. My Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and also my newsletter if that's something you're interested in. More importantly, you can also act as an ambassador and then share this uh, video or my Facebook page or something to your feed, which helps other people discover this. And that's really why I'm here every month. I wanna help you guys. I wanna share the light and really help everybody discover their potential and work past their block. So when you do that, it helps me spread that word and helps me spread that light, and uh, I really appreciate it. Let's move along now to your closing message for this month. And what I'm seeing here is that you're stronger than you think, you're more flexible than you think. And the, the last thing that really popped into my mind was you're extraordinary. And that's what the, um, this was the wealth card came through. It says, in the world, not of the world. I want you to really embrace this sort of extra, <laughs> extraterrestrial or spiritual or non-human energy that's flowing through you because it's what you are, it's what you came from, it's what we all are. This, whatever we're wearing, this face, this skin, this, this environment, this is just one life, this is just one of many. And as we start to wake up, we're going to pay a lot less attention to the vehicles that we're using to kind of move around on this planet and pay more attention to what's beneath it. So your journey this month, it's not just about, I mean, there's a lot of healing this month. Uh, if you're looking to find out like what's going on with your job, that's not what I see this month. There's a lot going on with your heart, with your soul, with love. And I want you to just spend some time dealing with all of that. Um, with that being said, by the way, since I talked about uh, career in here, there is room for movement there, but I want you to make sure that you're not overworking yourself. Again, with the slowing down, it's more important for you to take care of you, okay? So thank you so much. I hope you got what you needed, and I really appreciate you spending time with me. You have so many choices in, um, here on YouTube and also in life 
that it's an honor and a privilege to uh, talk to you for the last 40 minutes or so. All right, until next month, be well, be kind, and have a great month, okay?